Hey guys, it's Tony from Historic Barbecue. Tonight, we're cooking up an awesome hanger steak from our friends over at Liberty Farm Market. We're gonna serve that with a uh, arugula salad with a homemade barbecue vinaigrette. So, a hanger steak is a pretty uncommon cut. There's actually only one of these per cow. Uh, so, it's actually also called the uh, butcher's cut because it's uh, not uncommon for the butcher to just keep this one for himself. So, ideally, this is gonna be as tender as a uh, tenderloin or a filet, but it's going to have uh, the richness and the flavor of a ribeye. So kind of the best of both worlds, so I'm really looking forward to trying this. So this thing is really in two separate halves, and there's a big piece of uh, connective tissue between the, the two halves. Uh, so we're just going to clean up the outside a little bit here, just get some of this big chunks of fat, and then we're going to split this right down the middle to get rid of that connective tissue. A little bit of fat. But this kind of feels like a brisket point as far as the uh, texture of it. And uh, just like our uh, steak tacos on Tuesday, uh, this is a pasture raised, non GMO, uh, local Wagyu. So this is the good stuff. A little bit of silver skin on this side. So you're probably not going to be able to find this at uh, your local grocery store. Uh, you can see the marbling there, that looks awesome. Uh, but you should be able to find it at, you know, specialty butcher type stores. Uh, Liberty Farm Market obviously has them. I'm pretty sure uh, Mr. Brisket up in Cleveland has them and he'll ship them. So there, there are ways to get these if you want to give it a try. So just And those tacos on Tuesday, you guys didn't get to see our reaction when we were actually eating them. That was fantastic. Probably some of the best steak tacos I've ever had. What's the camera lady think? They were pretty delicious. You're not as enthusiastic as I am. Though. I'm enthusiastically <laughs> filming. <laughs> but okay. no, they were really good. So now we're going to try to separate these without losing too much meat. So we're just going to write down this seam. This is kind of like that connective tissue we took out of the flat iron. You, you're just never going to render this out, so there's no reason to even try to cook this as one piece. Would like a Dorothy Lane have this where we've been going? You More might be able to ask them to order it in. I don't know that they would carry it on a daily basis. You definitely have a better shot of getting it there than you would. Yeah. Like a Kroger. We've got the knife phobe on the line. You're scaring him. I'm cutting away from myself mostly. So you can see the marbling inside here all the way through. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. So this one is pretty much ready to go. You could take this little tail off if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. What do you recommend for a good knife set? Seems you have great ones. Um, so I actually... You're not really a knife set guy. I'm not. I actually have this as a, um, Gunther... What are these? Yeah, Gunther William. I actually got this in an OBR auction. Um, I'm actually not a huge fan. Uh, I like the knives themselves, but I'm not a fan of that set because they're all huge. But this is the chef knives for that. That's like a 10 or 12 inch chef knife. That's just way too big for me. Um, I mainly only use, um, yeah, so there's... I'm obviously a, a chef knife fan. There's my, my go-to. Um, so that's uh, the one on the far right is what I use the most. That's a Wusthof chef knife. I think uh, two of those three are Wusthof knives. Um, and then the Shun, which I'm using right now, is uh, so chef knife and the Shun is probably my most common commonly used knives. Um, one of those chef knives is just like a KitchenAid or something, and I use that whenever I'm trimming around bones and stuff, and I don't want to mess up my a good knives. You had a really good find. What was it? The William Sonoma Outlet? Yeah, there's a, we there's, were at? There's a William Sonoma Outlet, um, probably about an hour north of us. And they had. But I'm sure they've got them hopefully yeah. around the country. Um, they had shun knives there um, on sale for like, it was like 65 or 70% off. Um, and sometimes those stores, they say that, and then you look up the price and it's like the same as what you would get on Amazon. Um, but this was still like, even at, you know, um, after that discount, it was close to like, you know, 40% cheaper than what they had uh, um, on like an Amazon. So I, I almost bought a big brisket slicer while I was there, but I, I was able to hold myself off. 
The camera woman was going to buy you knives for Christmas, but I knew too well that you would be extremely picky. And even with all the internet research, I knew that you'd want to. Uh... Yeah, and I have good knives at, at the house here, but I um, on the trailer I actually um, have just, you know, um, restaurant store knives just because um, I'm going to cut away from myself. Yeah. <laughs> Driving down the road, I don't think that it makes sense to have a hundred dollar knife bouncing down the roads, and I'm just gonna mess them up. Um, so I normally have them professionally sharpened once a year. I haven't had them done this year yet. Um, there's lots of times you can find somewhere local that'll do them, um, or I've sent them off to Knife Aid. That's what I did last year, and uh, they came back like super sharp. So that's a service. They they mail you an envelope. This is all just more of that connective tissue that I'm taking off of there. Charlie Jackie says hello. Hey, Charlie. I think a lot of uh, people were supposed to Oh, hello. To be... <laughs> I'm getting hellos, too. And kudos for my um, <laughs> knife safety reminders. There's a lot of competition people that uh, would normally be the competition right now. There was one scheduled this weekend, so um, I'm sure Charlie probably would have been there. So these are both good to go. And um, I'm actually going to cook these. Uh, we're going to give the grill a break tonight. And uh, cook these inside. I'm, I've got a cast iron pan preheated back here. We're gonna try to make it so we don't smoke ourselves out. I didn't open the door or the window before we started, so it's gonna be extra important. Um, but I wanted to show this th the whole trimming process to you, and I only had one of these, so um, we're just gonna cook it as we go here. So I'm just gonna season this um, pretty simply with some salt and some historic black. Uh, those steak tacos are so good on Tuesday. I, I was going to do a coffee rub on these, um, but since the beef was so good on Tuesday, I didn't want to a little bit of silver skin here overpower it with anything. So we're just going to keep it simple today. A little bit of salt and a little bit of stark black. Oh, for those who were listening yesterday, there was a question from Tony's parents about whether he picked up all of his cooking skills at a YMCA cooking class. Um, he made milkshakes there, and we learned he was between 8 and 10 years old. I don't think they had a grill there, though. When that took place. No, I think you were mostly into the desserts. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going pretty light on this just because I'm, I'm wanting to taste the beef here today. Let's get a little on the side. Would you plate it like that? Uh, no, so we're gonna slice it up. Okay. I'm. I know I'm so, getting ahead of myself. In an effort to keep the smoke down, normally you would put oil in the pan. I'm gonna instead put oil on the steak. So hopefully we're gonna only put enough oil. I'm using the high heat pan uh, again, just <laughs> an attempt to keep my house from uh, setting all the smoke detectors off. So hopefully with just a tiny bit of oil in the pan, that's gonna keep us from getting too smoky in here. This is probably a dumb question, but why so much smoke? Because um, the oil, once the oil hits the pan, mm. it'll... Um, and I've got this actually pretty low, lower than you would. Um, I preheated about five out of 10 on the... Uh... I don't have my infrared thermometer with me, but I was shooting for about a 450 on there. I might've been a little lower than that, but. So we're just gonna give that about uh, three or four minutes on that side, and then we're gonna rotate it and get the other side. And so while that's going, uh, let's work on our uh, salad. Get this steak out of the way. So we're gonna do an arugula salad with a, uh, some apples and a barbecue vinaigrette. Uh, barbecue vinaigrette is actually a product that I'm hoping to release at some point. So you're getting a sneak peek here, and I forgot the barbecue sauce. So we're going to do half a cup of Historic Original. We're actually going to measure this one out. Oh, and you actually have enough in the squeeze bottle. And that's this time. slightly prepared. We're going to do a third a cup of apple cider vinegar. Put 
This is a barbecue vinaigrette um, that I've been working on for quite some time. That's why I'm measuring this. This is actually a test batch for uh, bottling purposes. I've been working on this one for a while, and it's actually probably one of my favorite products. It's delicious. Quarter of a cup of olive oil. You get faster pouring olive oil. You can kind of adjust this to your preferences, of course. Then our spice blend here, which is uh, two teaspoons of onion, uh, two teaspoons of garlic powder. Uh, I got a little bit of ground pepper in there. Just this on. I like uh, the uh, either granulated or the flakes of onion in here, but I only had onion powder, so. Put a pinch of salt. Too excited for the meat. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it's dying or what. So that's all it that's all it takes to make the barbecue vinaigrette. That's pretty good. Look good. Pinch more salt in there. It's not quite ready yet. We'll get the other ingredients for our salad ready. You guys watched last night, we did those uh, pork chops. Um, as I suspected, the brine was in there. It was in the brine a little bit too long. Um, I did a 24 hour brine. It was a pretty weak brine as far as the uh, salt content goes, but they were a little salty, uh, which means I either should have uh, brined them less or I should have um, put less salt in there. So I think 24 hours is just a little bit too long on the brine. But they were still good. Some onion, or onion, some uh, apple for our salad. So tomorrow we're going to be making some uh, burgers with smoked pork belly on it, so looking forward to that. And then I might try a few new things next week. We're talking about maybe doing a jerky, maybe fish tacos or carnitas. So if there's uh, anything you guys are wanting to see, just let me know and we'll figure out a way to make it happen. Sounds like we've only got a, another uh, two weeks of this left based on the reports coming out of Ohio today, so we'll see. So we got our apple. While you do that, I'm going to take this off of here, so bear with me. Okay. I think this stick's pretty close to being ready to flip, so... Got a nice sear on there. You guys don't have smell of vision. Mm -hmm. It smells, smells amazing. Good. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of butter in here and a couple cloves of garlic. So once the steak comes out of here, we're going to make a little uh, pan sauce with some mushrooms and some uh, red wine to get all those juicy bits off the bottom. Check this real quick with our thermal pan. Yeah, we still got a little ways. We're going to take it off about uh, probably 125-ish. Can finish up our salad while we're waiting here. Go to our arugula. I promise I washed my hands before we started. Our 
apple slices. Get some goat cheese. The barbecue in there. I do get steak. There was a question from your parents about whether I received a steak. Even though I had an equipment malfunction, hopefully I can eat. We'll see. That's the deal. It's uh, food for filming services. It's not really a fair trade. <laughs> this guy again, it shouldn't take very long. Get there. Any questions from the crowd while we're waiting? Um, Aunt Mary says it looks very fancy. I think she probably wants some. It's probably going to be a little uh, more rare than she she enjoys, but you can always take it to whatever time you see you want. Going to pour some of that butter on the top. There's the smoke. Still not too bad. If you're doing this on a grill, I would just do it a uh, high heat. Um, probably about the same time, the same amount of time we got here, about four or five minutes per side. Um, season it the same, trim it the same. Um, we're just doing it inside today just so everyone could see the whole process. It's been a little windy here, so it's hard to do any filming outside. What's sunny today, though? Uh-huh. I'm good, man. I'm going to turn up a little bit. You could cook ribeyes, fillets, the same method if you don't, if you're in an apartment or you're not allowed to have a grill, that's, okay. Gotta watch that smoke. Hey Mary, just ask, can you cook a fillet the same way? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so if it's a thicker cut um, and you like it a little bit more done, um, so since we're doing this to medium rare, it's okay to do it the whole time like this. Uh, if you're doing a thicker cut or you wanted it more well done, you can always sear it and then pop it in the oven. Um, and that'll prevent the outside from overcooking. Um, you just leave it in there until you get the uh, desired doneness. Oh, I can't see the temperature. Yeah, we're still about not moving very as quick as I thought we would, but that's okay. So once the steak fin finishes, what we're going to do is we're going to put our mushrooms in the pan, uh, let those soften up a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of red wine just to uh, kind of soak up all these bits at the bottom. Uh, maybe a little bit of thyme, and uh, we'll use that as a sauce, or you can just serve the mushrooms on the side. It smells really good. Hello, Loud Smoke Barbecue, checking in from D.C. Hey. Camera woman lived in D.C. for about four and a half years. Well, Northern Virginia, so it's not really the same. But I worked in D.C. So for all of us, it's I worked. In, I worked in people, the district, the so. Same. The real question is if I'm going to cook the second one or uh, vacuum seal that one for later. Mm. But I have a feeling that we're going to want it. Take some sweet time. What right about 108? 
So little known fact, Tony has a slight allergy to smoke. So it's yeah, so very I, interesting. I normally, uh, the day after a barbecue competition, I'm normally, um, allergies are all clogged up, my eyes are all watery. You can normally tell when I've been cooking, which is in the summer is almost every week. But, um, and he likes and he likes to color Barbies. No, not really. That's my that's our niece. You get, you get the whole story. Yeah, it is that. the whole story. We've got letters from one niece, well, niece ish, your cousin's daughter. That's Ava, and then Bryn's coloring. I'm just trying to keep the crowd entertained. I know these are taking a little bit longer than we expected. Okay, 120 in that spot, 114. Well, that's pretty much all there is for the hanger stick. Um, okay. Yeah, we got some smoke going now. <laughs> I'm not going to turn that on so it's too loud. But uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Once this is, uh, hits that internal temperature we want, uh, which is like I said, I'm going to probably take it to about uh, 122. I'm going to pull it off, let it sit for about five minutes. Then we're going to slice it up and uh, serve it with our salad while we uh, turn that rest is when we're going to make our sauce. And that's going to take it a few minutes. But that's pretty much all there is to it. So, so we're getting to see the whole process today. Okay. I'm getting there. I should have pushed the centerpiece. So I think uh, next week we're talking about uh, tacos, maybe meatballs. I actually just ordered some duck yesterday online. I don't know if that'll be in time to do next week. Uh, so we're going to figure out uh, something fun to do with some duck. Maybe bake a few things on the trailer. Maybe some appetizers for all your Zoom happy hours so you can uh, still uh, enjoy some awesome grilled food uh, virtually with your friends. Getting close. 121, 120. I don't want to overcook this, so I'm going to go ahead and take it off. Throw it in our warm oven and work on our sauce here real quick. That was about 120. So, got our pan with all our good bits on the bottom. So we're just gonna do some mushrooms. A little bit of wine. As soon as I put that wine in there, it's hard to tell since it's cast iron. All those good little bits of uh, flavor came right off the bottom of that pan. Okay, so when you're doing something like that, is it important to kind of uh, fold in the wine like you're doing it bit by bit? Um, I just don't want to get too much in there because I'm not really trying to make a soup. Mm -hmm. I just want enough to get all those uh, bits off the bottom. We're going to reduce it down a little bit. Um, it depends on if you want to make this as a sauce, you can put more in there and just uh, reduce it down. Um, I think since we have such a nice cut of steak there, 
Um, it's not really going to need a saw, so we're really just uh, using that to get all those bits off the bottom and uh, you know, try to get those flavors into the mushrooms. I just want to cook these till they're soft, probably about four or five minutes, depending on how hot your pan is. Add a little bit of butter just to give it some creaminess. Butter's never, never a bad idea. Pinch of salt, and just a little bit of thyme. Fresh thyme would be better, but this is what I have. Should have gotten an herb garden going during this. They had some uh, fresh herbs uh, in little pots at uh, Dorothy and Margaret that I was eyeballing, but uh, I think I'll stick to cooking. I don't. I think I've killed two or three shrubs every year in front of my house for the past several years. So stick to your strengths. Is what I decided. You can let this cook down to get as thick as you want, but uh, these mushrooms actually cook pretty quick here. So we'll let that reduce down and let's see how this steak looks. So this is exactly how we're going to serve it uh, in slices, the side of our mushroom. So this turned out, at least from the looks of it, pretty good. Medium rare right there. That's exactly what we're shooting for. So that's our hanger steak. Uh, we're going to let our mushrooms reduce down a little bit, and then we're going to plate this up and eat it. So thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any uh, suggestions for uh, next week's recipes, let me know. We're going to start planning that here pretty soon. Tomorrow we've got our uh, barbecue burger with smoked pork belly on top. And uh, that's all we've got for tonight. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay historic and stay at home.